Hi, my name is Mani Alikani, I'm Dean and Professor at CITOR Academy, and I'd like to welcome you to another session of CITOR channel. Today, we start our journey toward the second volume of Mechanotropy book that recently has been published. Before I start this journey, I'd like to clarify some terminology. The difference between treatment planning, mechanotropy, and biomechanics. Because sometimes these terms are mixed. When a patient arrives to your clinic, first you put your diagnostic and you make your problem list very clear. Then based on what you believe, how you have been trained, you design your treatment plan. You may decide to do extraction, non-extraction, surgical, non-surgical. However, mechanotropy is a science. To design the best mechanical solution to solve your mechanical problems. It does not depend on your philosophy. It does not depend on your school of training. It follows the rules of physics and biology. That's different from biomechanics or biology. Biomechanics is just the science of mechanics and physics and somehow biological response to mechanical stimulation that you need to know if you want to design proper mechanotropy. Following this discussion, I wanted to introduce another terminology, customized mechanotropy. These days, customized medicine become the center of attention. Each patient need to have a treatment that focus on the needs of that patient. This is not just limited to medicine. It is also the center of orthodontics and craniofacial orthopedics. We cannot have one medication to address all problems of the patient in medicine. The same way, we cannot have one tool to address all the problems of our patient. You cannot put braces or aligners in all of our patient with this hope that solves the problem, regardless of their problem. If the patient has open bite, deep bite, vertical problem, transverse problem, sagittal problems, individual tooth problems, each one of them requires a customized mechanotropy, which brings the design of the mechanotropy the center of our attention. Design of mechanotropy has three important steps. The first step is recognizing the target that you are treating. The second step is to use your biomechanical and biological science to find the most optimized treatment for each singular target that you need to move on that patient. The third step is to sequence which one of these mechanical design need to be applied first which one second, and so on and so forth. Let's start with the first goal, recognizing the targets. The targets of mechanotropy are different from the targets in diagnostic and treatment planning. In mechanotropy, we only have three targets, a dental arch, segment of teeth, or individual tooth. For example, when we're talking about the dental arch, you know in diagnostic and treatment plan, we separate the basal bone from alveolar bone. Alveolar bone from the teeth. In mechanotropy, because we apply our mechanics through the teeth to the bone, when we talk about dental arch, we consider the whole alveolar bone and the basal bone as one segment. Therefore, in mechanotropy, the largest size target that we have is the whole dental arch, then segment of teeth, and the third is individual tooth. I'm gonna go to details in the next session, talk about each one of the targets and their movement in this space. However, today I like to define another two important terminology, major movement, minor movement. If your target needs to move significantly in this space, whether it's dental arch or segment or the individual tooth, 
that is considered major movement. Now the magnitude of it is an arbitrary term. In this book we define anything more than 2 millimeters, anything more than 30 degrees as a major movement. Why recognizing the major movements are important? Major movements can impose significant side effect biologically to the targets and to the anchor unit, to the teeth that should not move. Therefore, they need a special attention. When we're talking about customized mechanotherapy, we are focusing on major movements. On the other hand, minor movements, the movements are not that significant. Again, you can define what is not considered significant, uh, anything around one millimeters, anything few degrees. Those are not significant movement. Do they have side effect biologically and on adjacent teeth? Definitely. However, the side effects are small, clinically acceptable. They do not cause significant harm. For these minor movements, most of the time we use simpler mechanics. When you are applying braces on all the teeth, when you are applying a aligner, you're actually assuming that your movements are minor. You are not assuming that your movement is major. I will continue the discussion of the different targets and their movements inside the space in the next session. I hope you enjoyed this session of CTOR channel. If you have not subscribed to our channel, please go ahead and subscribe and please don't forget to press the like button. Looking forward to see you in the next session. Thank you.